What's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at another Frame Arms kit. This is the Goldsworg and you guys know that I love the Frame Arms line. One thing that I like about it is just the different variety of mecha design styles that you have within the Frame Arms line. So I don't necessarily love all of them, but this is a design that I immediately fell in love with. I think it's going to make for an awesome kit. So we'll check it out here in today's review. All right, guys, so let's start off taking a look at the outside box art here and everything. We got the Goldsworg flying along, shooting its rifle there. This is number 55 in the Frame Arms line. And in case you guys weren't aware, this set is also available as just an add-on set to the Kobold, if you just wanted to get that, but this is gonna be the full set to be able to make the entire kit. You have the same artwork here on the side of the box. And on the bottom of the box, we gotta look at what the kit is going to look like all built and painted up front and back. It's got a really cool design. And then customized here, different ways that you can build that, again, just based off of the base kit weapons that it's got included and then some clear parts that we have in there for the head. On the other side we got to look at what the kit looks like just built up straight out of the box completely unpainted. There's how that's going to look and our list price is over here for 4800 yen. Opening up the box this is going to be one where you have to build the architect frame if you guys have built previous frame arms kits before. A lot of the original ones used to come with the architect frame already pre-built for you, but the newer ones don't have that anymore, which I kind of like. The original kits were a little bit more floppy, whereas the newer ones where you can build the frame yourself tend to be a little bit more solid. Taking a look at the manual there, you've got an image of the kit with some cool effects added and some information down here in Japanese. Around on the back, we've got our color guide there and then just sample photos so you can see where all the colors go around on the kit. Opening up to the front page, we've got our parts list there with those couple of grayed out sections being leftover parts that won't be used for this kit. And here you got a layout of how the construction is gonna go. So you'll build the frame and then build it up as the goals work, but then it's gonna show you how you can build it into a couple of the different ways. And we'll take a look at all that in the review, but here's all the construction opening up to the middle pages. Usually this is where it does give you some backstory on these. So people have asked me before, is there any backstory or anime or anything related to frame arms? And there isn't other than just what's included here in the manual as far as I know. So there is some information there about the weapons and some backstory of it, but it's all there in Japanese. Going along, basically you just end up building the weapons and just talking about the transformation into kind of different ways that you can build it here at the end of the manual, but that's it. So first off, we do have a few poly caps here and then all of our frame arms, generic inner frame parts here to make the architect frame here, basically runner A, and we've got two of runner B, which is gonna be for the arms and legs, and then runner V1, which is gonna be for our generic frame arms hands. So you've got open hands, closed fist, and weapon holding hands. The first half of the runners here are all going to be originally from the Kobold kit, so these are not going to be new parts necessarily. Here's runner A, here's runner B. For some more of those armor pieces, we've got two of those, and the Kobold kit originally came out in 2011 there for reference. Here's runner C in that dark navy color, and the same thing for runner D, got two of those. Runner E in the light blue, and some gray parts here on runner F and G, and we've got two of this G runner. Now we're getting into some new parts here with runner H. You can see there's some parts there for the head. And then a larger runner of some new armor pieces here. Runner I, we've got two of these. Runner J, obviously some parts there for our new weapon. Runner K, a few more parts in that dark navy color. We've got two of those. Runner L, a couple of new pieces there in gray. Some more new frame parts here on the M runner. We've got two of these. Some new light blue pieces here on the N runner, two of those. And our new clear pink parts are here on the O-Runner. All right, guys, so here is the Goldsworg all built up. And of course, it looks fantastic here. Such a cool design and a really cool mix of just different parts and everything going on there. I will say it does still kind of suffer from the general frame arms issues of some parts and some joints being a little bit weak in their connections, but nothing that a little bit of tightening of some joints and connections, a little bit of glue or some paint, something like that couldn't fix. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the accessories and the articulation of the kit. And to look at the accessory is gonna actually be pretty quick because here is its main accessory, this rifle, and that is gonna be about it. You do have some seam lines here on this, but otherwise it does have some nice detail on there. Otherwise, we've just got our hand options. Open hands here, our closed fists are there on the kit. 
and then trigger finger holding hands and regular holding hands. We do also have an alternative head and also an alternative piece here for the chest and that is because you can kind of change the form of this. We'll take a look at that here in a little bit but basically you can swap some pieces around and make the legs different and make the arms a little bit different with these optional arm pieces. And you can just change things around to make the form a little bit different. So the articulation is going to be pretty standard so you have some rotation forward and back here at the shoulders. These sections here of the shoulder can of course move around. You can bring the arm up to the side to about 90 degrees there like that. You've got rotation here at the forearm. You've got a double joint here at the elbow which is going to give you a little bit more than 90 degrees which is nice. This flap here at the back of the hand can be moved. The hand is not on a ball joint, but just on a peg. So you can just rotate that, but you do also have a hinge for bending that forward and back. Head can go all the way up to there, which is quite nice. And you have that nice clear part in there for the mono eye. There is a hinge in the stomach section for like an ab crunch, but it's a little bit inhibited. So you're not really gonna be able to get too much out of that. You can of course rotate it though at that center part there a little bit. Around here on the backpack, these bits which are meant to be like kind of booster pods, but later when you do the transformation of the legs, these are gonna be your new leg parts. So those will be where those will go, but those can move on a little bit of a mechanical arm there. The only real skirt armor that we have is these little bits right here, which can be rotated. Otherwise the legs are free to move pretty much anywhere you might want. You've got a nice double joint here in the knee. Yeah, with the shape of this armor, you're not really gonna be able to take advantage too much of the lower of the two joints. So you can get still a pretty nice knee bend with this massive knee armor sticking out there at the front. The ankle can move forward and back very far like that. Rotate that side to side up underneath the feet. Some nice detail there. So overall, the articulation of these kits is really quite nice. It's just that it can be a little bit weak in some certain areas. So you might want to tighten things up or if you're experiencing things falling off like this particular part right here for example falls off kind of easily because it's just a simple ball and socket joint there so it can be a little bit finicky for a quick size comparison here it is with the 144 scale strike gundam and generally the size of frame arms kits is kind of in between 144 and 100 scale gundam kits but if you're looking to kit bash i would say frame arms kits are going to be more compatible at least like size wise with like 100 scale gundam kits all right guys, here's a look at the kit as it's transformed into the Goldsworg Custom. So basically, again, taking the backpack parts, moving them around to the legs, removing some parts on the arms, swapping out the head and the center part of the chest. And that's basically what you get. I do really like this version of it because it's got those longer legs and a pretty, very sleek design. The head design is very cool with the rabbit ears and everything. But this kit overall is great. I gotta say, I really like the details on this kit. The, there's a lot of really great details around on it. Some nice color separation with the multiple tones of blue. If you're not into kits being basically monotone where this one's basically just different shades of blue and gray I can see how that may not be ex too exciting for you but there's definitely plenty of options I think you could paint this in many many ways and it would look really awesome that said if you do plan on painting the kit there is going to be a number of seam lines you're going to have to remove on the armor and on the weapon as well as I pointed out earlier but of course that's just kind of going to go with the territory again that's a common thing with frame arms kits unfortunately uh, a lot of really great designs and really cool features and amazing customized ability with these just with all the hard points and everywhere on them and then just being just very compatible with each other you can add additional weapons and armor and part swap between kits very easily but you do have the downside of having uh, seam lines on them and some weak joints here or there but honestly those are all things that are pretty easy to fix overall I do really really enjoy the frame arms line and I hope that you guys do too what are your thoughts on this particular design is it one that you're a fan of or not let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and of course if you're looking to pick up some frame arms kits like this one or others you can check out the link to USA Gundam store the link is down in the video description below so check that out and also check out the point system there if you guys are planning on buying some kits make sure that you guys are earning points as you're doing that it's a pretty cool system so check it out all the details are there on the website and as always guys thank you so much for the support liking the video commenting subscribing i really appreciate it guys until next time i hope you're all having a great day i'll see y'all later bye bye